Hey guys, Morvich JK here and welcome to season 5 of the rebuild of Wigan Athletic. So this season we obviously have Champions League football. Um, I declined an invite to the pre-season tournament because I wanted to sort out transfers right at the very start here. So yeah, let's get straight into the transfer window. And guys, our first signing for £75 million, Matisse Delict. If we can get him in though, but I'm just going to negotiate the contract and then we'll move on to more signings. And guys, it is confirmed. Matthias Delict is joining Wigan Athletic. So we put him there and then we swap Delict and Gomez over. And now that is the back line. Pace, boys, pace. All about the pace. And we are going to be selling Tavares, Samarkan, and um, also going to be selling um, Kamavinga. But yes. Let's get on to more incredible signings. And guys, our second signing for £60 million, hopefully. Wilfred Ndidi from Leicester City. And as you can see, we've got it narrowed down to one of these three. And we need someone who is a box-to-box -to -box tamale. It's a bit of both. The, the Ondombele is the highest rated, but isn't as good as these two, in all fairness. So I'm honestly thinking maybe we don't go for Ondombele and we go for Dominguez. Or Tonali. Even though um, Ondombele is higher rated. I honestly think. Because obviously he's got the worst athleticism. Tonali's got the same athleticism. Dominguez has got better. Dominguez has got the worst technical ability. But Tonali has the best. Tonali has the best shooting level with Dominguez. Tonali has the best passing. Tonali has the second best defending after Dominguez. And Tonali has not got the greatest mentality. He's middle. So I'm thinking maybe we just go out to Tonali. But yeah, let's get let's negotiate with Ndidi. Hopefully he accepts. And then that'll be a second signing done. And guys, our first departure. Sorry, it's not it's not it's not focusing. Oh no, come on, focus. And yes, our first departure it is. £60 million pounds of bloody Samarkin. He it's it's double his value, and I actually don't believe it. Crazy, man. Crazy. Insane. And, guys, another departure. Eduardo Camavinga leaving the club for £40 million. Pounds. That is big. That is really big. And, guys, another ridiculous price. £45 million pounds to rivals Chelsea, though, for Tavares. Absolutely mental sell sales, sales, sales here going on. And guys, potentially one of our final moves of the window for one of the best players in the world. Now, this man does not have amazing shooting. I know he doesn't have great finishing and that, but we could even potentially get that up. He's actually got 675 finishing. You know what? Frankie Dion, brilliant. He's got a 121 million release clause. But we can try him for 110, right? We, we could get him for 110 at least, I bet you. But yeah, first of all, we're going to offer 100 million. I'm going to play this one the whole way out because I want you guys to see it because this is mental. Offer transfer fee. You'll offer... No, not one pound. 100 million pounds for Frankie De Jong. 121, okay. Counter, propose new transfer fee. We'll move that down to 110 million. What do you think about that one? 118, okay, we're getting somewhere, 115, yeah, Frankie Dio, this is it, this is it, I can feel it, can you guys hear that, can you guys hear that, I'm playing the first leg in the Champions League for our games, we are gonna smash our opponents in the first leg, and then we don't, and then I'm gonna sim the second leg, and it doesn't even matter, oh my god, look at that wage, heart attack, heart attack, bloody hell, what are you chatting on about? Why is your wage so high? Oh my god. It's gonna it's they're gonna tell me to do the cut the wage, aren't they? He only wants 270k a week, but he just wants a load of other stuff, so whatever. Yes! That's what I wanted, guys. That is the one transfer that I am I was eager to make it as a pre-contract signing. Imagine if I got him, Rodri, and Arthur as pre-contract signings, though. Imagine how sick that would have been, but now it doesn't even matter. And I went and had a look at the squad, and we've got backup. Okay, maybe not a right wing lad, but we've got backup everywhere on the field. 
Don't worry, I'll show you in a second. But we've got backup. We've got a backup. Two backup strikers, Gelhart and Jolly. We've got a backup left winger in Martin, who can also play on the right, but our attack is versus versatile, so I can change it. We've got a, two backup midfielders, one more defensive, one which is just a youth prospect. We got backup central defender, backup wide defenders, and another backup central defender. I'm not going to loan anyone else out. I, I'm not loaning anyone else out now. So, yeah, that is the squad I am very happy to use. Look at it, guys. Now, if there was one thing I need, it's a backup keeper. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have to go buy one because I, I just want a good backup keeper. But, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. And, guys, this is our final signing of the transfer window. We are going to be paying um, 20 million for a backup goalkeeper in Pacheco. He will be going down in rating this season. Hence the reason why I bought him. I bought him because he's older. Um... I bought him because he's an older player. I am going to be buying him because he's an older player. And he's going down in rating, so he won't be too disappointed with no game time. They want 30 million for him. Okay, calm down, bro. 28 million is the lowest I'll go. If he says no, I'll just go buy someone. Okay, rude. Rude. Okay, I'm sorry about that, guys. Let me go find someone else. Okay then guys, so we have found Walter Benitez, 83 rated at the age of 30. Oh and these want a release clause from I may as well pay it, but yeah, let's go just go pay it. And let's get into negotiations with the final signing of this of this fifth season. So we are obviously in the Champions League. And I'm not gonna lie, but I'm pretty nervous because if we can make it through the group, I honestly think we can win it. Because when we go into the knockout rounds, obviously I'm playing. So we're gonna offer him a two year deal at most. Maybe he wants one deal. No, he wants two years at the club. No release clause. I I could put in like a 30 million release clause, but I don't think we will have to go into another season. And in terms of money, we'll give him a bit of a retirement bonus. We'll give him 50k a week. And we'll give him 800k because he's retiring soon. Um, he'll probably This will probably be his last club. And that is it. We have our backup keeper, guys. I don't actually know if we've been drawn up yet in our groups. But that will be interesting to see as well. So let's get Walter Benitez in. Who can we get out? Probably Hughes, right? Yeah, we'll do that. But yes, so happy with how the team is doing, guys. Delict, Kabak, go. I, if there's any, if we go into a next season, I think Kabak's the only player we can really upgrade. But yeah, I want to see what group we got in the Champions League. Very quick, very, 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 very. Very quickly. What did we get in the Champions League? Come on, group stage, group stage. Qualifying round. Are we in the qualifying round? No, we're not in the qualifying round. But yeah, I'm going to sim until we got our Champions League group. So, this is the Champions League group we, group we have been given. Napoli, who are a very good team. I don't know how good they are going to be five seasons in. Because obviously Mertens, Insigne, Koulibaly, they will probably still be playing. But they'll be older. Then Vika and Shakhtar Donetsk. So, I think we can get through this group. I honestly have a lot of faith. So then, guys, with the summer transfer window at its um, end, we have spent £274 million on the Ligt and Didi, Diong and Benitez, and we um, sold to Markham, Malakla, Kamavinga, Tavares and Gelhart. So, yeah, that is all for this first January window. Well, summer window, guys. Obviously, changes can be made in January, but I will see you guys in a bit. But first, actually... Um, Wigan got relegated in real life, subject to appeal. Hopefully they get their appeal, like, their points deduction rescinded. Hopefully they stay in the league, but they are currently relegated to League One, which is pretty, pretty, pretty upsetting. But, yeah, I'll see you guys in January. So then, guys, this is how things finished in the group. So what I ended up doing is, in the final game, I just went and used the second team because I don't really care... Who we got. But yeah, let's see who we get in the next round. And hopefully, it's pretty easy. So then, guys, we are now into the January transfer window. And, um, yeah. I'm just going to quickly sort a couple of things out with the squad. And then, that will be that. So, in terms of um, what I want to sign this window. I was thinking maybe we sign a centre-back. But Kabak's actually gone up in rating he's actually developing quite well again so he stays into the team 
we do need to sign a backup striker because we don't have a backup striker and that's practically the reason why. Um, but other than that, the team is doing very well. As you can see, in the league, we are currently first in the league by three points. And if you take a look at our record, we are the Invincibles at the minute. 118 and drawn three. So in the FA Cup, we are currently in round three. And we are we beat... Who was it? I think it was like West Brom Albion. Yeah, we beat West Brom 3-0 with our second team. In the Carabao Cup... We are in to the semi-finals. We are winning 2-0 on aggregate against United. I will probably play that to get us some trophies. In the Champions League, we are we did really well in the route. We didn't top it, but we did decent. And now we have to face Real Madrid. If we had finished top of the group, we would have to face Leverkusen. So I wish I did finish top of the group now and not saved up my players' energy. But yeah, other than that, let's get on to player stats. Let's get on to the appearances. So most, I've been trying to kind of spread the appearances. And Mbappe's played pretty much every game. Obviously, he's a brilliant player. In terms of goals, Mbappe has 22. Alvarez has 20. And Rodrigo has 15, which is brilliant. In terms of assists, De Jong has 11. Mbappe has 8. Rodrigo has 4. But yeah. Doing very, very well at the minute. No, do not want to transfer list him. And then Mbappé has 16 clean sheets, but he's not a defender, obviously. But yeah, in terms of that, that is pretty much it. I'll be back once I have found a striker that I want to sign. So then, guys, in terms of a backup striker, I was eyeing up Diva Carigi for the memes, but I don't have enough money. Same with this Mendes guy. He also look. he could be like a regen of like a Ronaldo or something cool. But he's obviously, he has a 37 million release clause, but it's just 17 million too much. However, Rodrigo, he doesn't have much athleticism left in him, but he still could be pretty good. He's only going to cost me around, what, like 10 million pounds, it says, to get him. And I'm not going to lie, but that's a pretty good offer for an 80 rated backup striker. So let's um, offer transfer fee of 10 million pounds. see what they say. I'm offering below his value because he's like that age. So we're going to counter propose a new transfer fee. Remove the squiggly line numbers and go with twelve million pounds. It's a little bit. It's a bargain, basically. They want fourteen point six. How about we give you thirteen point five then? Five hundred k over his um, valuation. And yes. So yeah, let's go in. Make the signing of him. And then we will be heading up to the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Because basically, I don't need to show you guys anything else. Um, he wants a one-year contract, which is pretty much all I am going to give him. Because he's getting old. Disregard release clause. Oh, I don't want to have to offer salary. I'll just give him 80000 with 500 k a week. We'll do that. How about that? Are you, what do you think? Yeah, there we go. So that is now Rodrigo's sign. So we can go put him on the bench. But yeah, I will see you guys. Um... In the next round of the Champions League. So then guys. Champions League first leg against Real Madrid. And I don't think we're going to win it. Well, I don't think we're making it. Like the attack is brilliant. The midfield as well is brilliant. But look at this. Alvarez. what our, 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 A brilliant player. Injured. He's out until potentially the Champions League final. Same with Kana. Delict is out for four weeks. Same with Joe Gomez. I don't know what to do. My main centre backs are in. My right back and my centre back are injured. My backup centre back and my striker are injured. So this is the team we're rocking with. We're using bloody Valet at centre back. We're using Collins at right back and we're using Sambi Laconga instead of Alvarez with a change of formation. I think we're screwed here, guys. And then in terms of what I've gone with in terms of in game, I don't even know what to do now. So I might just have to push De Jong up to camp. We can do that. Yeah, we'll do that. But yeah, in terms of what difficulty I'm going to play on, guys, I'm not even going to lie. I want to get this done this season. So I'm not going to play on beginner. Don't worry. I'm thinking maybe after... Let me attend the press conference and then I'll talk with you in a sec. So then, um, this is what we're going to do because it is Real Madrid. Um, let's obviously select sides. Let's select the home kit of Wigan. We'll go with the third kit for a rare for that. No, actually, that might be a kit, bit of a clash. But we could go with them for their white kit, maybe. Yeah, we'll go for their white kit. 
And in terms of game settings, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it down from legendary, maybe to world. Yeah, I'll turn it from legendary to world class. And that is all I'll do. So I'll see you guys probably at half time, maybe full time. I think the difficulty was a bit too easy. Um, and I also had sliders on to give me a bit of an advantage. So I turned down their pace because if you have a look, then their pace is all in the 90s for all their players. And basically, um, I had that up. But then what I did is about 30 minutes in, I switched it back. And after I switched their pace back up, it was 2-1. I scored a hat-trick of Mbappe early on. And I brought on Hughes and he scored a banger. So I had a lot of fun. So, yeah, that was very nice. So, yeah, let's go into match highlights and go see what happened. So, Mbappe, I just held the ball. They didn't even get a touch of the ball at this point. Um, I was playing really well attacking. But every time they won up, they could have scored. But that was a nice little tap in from Mbappe. Uh, and Didi playing into De Jong, sending Mbappe in, poor defending and ball roll goal. I don't even think the sliders affected the first two goals. Maybe not even the third, actually. No, I don't even think it. Uh, maybe the goalkeeper was a bit dodgy because he didn't come out quick enough. I don't know. But then we scored with Frankie de Jong, the first legitimate goal without any sliders on whatsoever. And it was a nice little tap in. And then we brought on Ollie Hughes, Tyler Martin and um, Rodrigo. Ollie Hughes came on at camp, played him in here. And I was like, you know what, he's probably going to miss, but let's get in. I was trying to finesse it far post, but he stuck it top end, which is brilliant. And then later on, Timo Werner got in behind. The young centre-back dives in and then Ozcan can't get there. So that's how it ends. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the second leg. Oops. Okay, so you may have wondered why I started recording pretty much halfway through the season. But it's, one reason is because Mattis Delict and Joe Gomez are back. Um, on any to play on my afternoon. You sorry, but yeah, um, we do have a final of the EF Cup final against final of the EFL Cup against City. The squad is pretty much perfect. Joe Gomez is back from injury. Delict is as well, but I don't know whether I should start them or keep them as bench for now. Um, Benitez wants a start, so I'll give him his start. But I really need a defensive upgrade, so I'm going to have to chuck in Gomez because he came back the quickest. So I think maybe if we chuck in Gomez, it's kind of a low-risk move because even if Joe Gomez gets injured again, then we bring on Matis Delix and there we go. Come on. First bit of silverware, proper silverware, like top-flight silverware in this rebuild. Come on, let's win the EFL Cup. Let's win the EFL Cup, come on. No, we lost on penalties. You've got to be kidding me. We lost on penalties. No. Still no silverware for the boys. No, still no silverware for the boys. Okay then, guys. Champions League, round of 16, second leg against Real Madrid. I'm nervous. I, I'm not going to lie, but I'm really nervous because I'm simming it. And the main team is kind of tired. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Joe Gomez, is he still technically injured? No, he isn't. So what do we do? So we're going to stick Mary back into the team. We're going to play Ward over Collins. Um, Rodrigo keeps going down, unluckily for him. And we're going to actually give Martin a game because as long as we don't lose 4-0, then we should be fine, right? If we don't lose 4-0, we, we go through to the next round of the Champions League. So very happy about that. Just don't lose 4 0. 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 We drew 1 1. Which means that we are through to the Champions League round of quarterfinals. Yes, quarterfinals. That's what they're called. Um, so, yeah, let's go over. Let's see who we got in our next leg. Unless, actually, we have to. No, actually, because all the legs should have been played, shouldn't they? Okay, come on. You wait for Champions League. Who do we have to play? In the next round, so it looks like we beat, uh, so we obviously beat Real Madrid 6 to an aggregate. United are through. Barcelona could, are taking a step towards being through. Kind of 50-50 between Leipzig and Piemonte. Um, Liverpool looked like they're out. Um, Bayern and Inter pretty close. Napoli looked like they could be through and same with City. So obviously very, very tough to see who we get. But yeah, let's just carry on, prodding along and hopefully winning some more trophies. 
So then, guys, for the for our first leg in the Champions League quarterfinal against Piemonte Calcio, um, we lost Mbappe to injury. He's not going to be back until next month, like the end of next month. So we've gone with Rodrigo. So basically, our attack is going to be pretty weak, but our defense is going to be insane, and so will our midfield. So basically, we've got half of our strongest team back. And in terms of where we are in the league, we lost to Man United, then drew to Arsenal due to lacking goals, due to Rodrigo and not having any of a main striker. So in the Premier League, we were we could have gone six points ahead of Liverpool, but instead now we are only one point ahead of Wigan, no, of Man City and Liverpool, and we lost our undefeated streak. So the undefeated thing didn't really matter, but I just want to have our striker back now. Um, I will be playing a couple of Premier League games. I said I wouldn't, but I will have to. I'm going to have to play against Liverpool to open up that gap again. And I will play Man City on the last day if we lift, if we get to lift the trophy. But yeah, we currently have our two legs against Piemonte to worry about. So yeah, let's focus on them and I'll see you guys at the end. We are going to keep it on world class, but we are going to keep it with no sliders throughout the whole match. So don't worry, guys. I will see you Probably at the end of the game, hopefully we have ourselves some away goals and a win in the bag. And guys, a hard-fought 3-0 win here against Piemonte Calcio. Away leg done, so as long as we don't lose 4-0, we should still be in the run-in. So, um, first goals from Acuna, getting in early on, um, sweaty to cross, and then Acuna with the near post strike to put his 1-0 up. The second goal then came in the 24th through Rodrigo, a penalty. Definitely a foul, Rodrigo gets in, steps up, laces it, not exactly top corner, but almost top corner. And then Rodrigo getting in again here late on and finishing it with his weak uh, foot. So that is it for the game, this game, so I'll see you guys for the second leg. So then guys, the second leg against Piemonte Calcio up next. Um, so let's go in, simulate this match, um, unless we lose, what, 4-0, then we stay in the competition. So yeah, let's get the squad on to the maximum. And there we go. That is the squad ready. And I am thinking, guys, that I will just clip. If we win the Premier League trophy, then I probably will clip that. Um, and then I'll also clip the Champions League final with the goals and that. Okay, let's go. Come on. Come on. They lost 3-0, saying he's beat us 4-0. We, we, we lost 2-1. So we are through to the next round. So then, guys, it looks like that our Champions League semi-final opponents are Manchester United. Manchester United. And Kylian Mbappe is back in the team. I'm going to play this game on Legendary. I think I played the Liverpool game on Legendary that I did play by accident. I ended up winning 2-0, but I was messing around for most of the game doing skills with my five-star skill and Martin. Sorry. Um, but yeah, Mbappe, we're going to bring him back. And because I'm playing the game, I don't think he will get injured at all. So in terms of who's unhappy, Martin, obviously, he's unhappy. He's never happy, is he? He's just ungrateful. Mare is going to come back into the team. But other than that, we'll bring Martin off the bench at some point. Probably for Mbappe, because Mbappe is injured, technically. But yeah, big game against Manchester United. I am going to play it on Legendary as well. I don't actually know what their team is, but it could be pretty good. It could be pretty good. It could be pretty good. So, we beat Man United in the last game. So, I we beat them, I think, like 2-1. So, yeah. And I, let's actually take a look at what their squad is. I think we can have a look, can't we? I think we can go to... What jobs are there, actually? Liverpool, I could go to Liverpool, City, Inter, Piemonte. Wow. <laughs> I could go to Liverpool, City, Inter or Piemonte Calcio. Wow. <laughs> very, very cool. Um, but in terms of the Manchester United squad, let's go and take a look. Let's go to League, Premier League. And then we'll go over to Clubs, Manchester United. Okay, let's take a look. So in terms of attackers... They have Chong, Chuazoe, Bruno Fernandes, De La Cruz, Gabriel, James Garner, Angel Gomez, Isco, Forgan Hazard, Daniel James, Eric Lamella, Jesse Lingard. Nemanja Matic is still going. Scotty McTominay is doing brilliantly. 
Marcus Rashford's still there. Roy, Sabitzer. They've got a brilliant attack. They've got a brilliant midfield. In terms of attack, Martial, very solid. And then in terms of defence, what are we looking at? Mario Rui, probably not a great. Adriazola's good, though. Smalling isn't great. Umtiti is really good, actually. So it's pretty much their defence is meh. Midfield is very good. Attack is very good. And in terms of who their keeper is, it's David De Gea. And they've got Binguru Kamada, the legend of the series, the man, the first ever player we signed. He's here. He's right there. Wow, it's going to be good to see him. But yeah, let's get into the game on legendary difficulty and let's hopefully beat him. One of the toughest matches ever, guys, against a very strong Manchester United team. And it is a 1-0 win away from home, though. If that was at home, I would have been more confident. But here, here is the goal. We got in using the slow defenders to draw in their space. Just give us more space. And then the absolute miss of a million. I don't know how De Jong has missed this. But look, we go the same thing again into De Jong. Got to be a goal. Wait, no, that was the wrong thing. But he did hit the post with a tap in like the first one. But we now have to simulate the second leg at Old Trafford. And we can't lose. We We can draw. Or we can win, but we cannot lose. And guys, going into the second leg at Old Trafford, this is the team we have to use Hughes because look how tired... Look, indeed, he got a two-month injury, basically. And in terms of if we would be able to use him before the end of the season, so two months from, let's say, this day, would be... No, we, we won't get to use Ndidi in the Champions League final if that is what happens. So we have to beat Man United... Or draw with them to get through to the Champions League final. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I think we went through, right? I think that means we go through because we got an away goal. They got none. Yes, we're throwing away goals. That's got to be it, right? Champions League final, guys. That's got to be it. That's got to be it, guys. Mere is injured. Oh, no. But we are in the Champions League final. He is out for two months, okay, so basically we have no one left. Everybody's just injured. But this is the second to last game of the season, and we should get quite a few of our main squad players back. But if we if we win this, we've, we've guaranteed league title. We are Centurions. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. You know what? I'm actually so excited. Yes! Returning of injuries. Let's go. This has got to be Alvarez, right? This has got to be Alvarez. Kana and Alvarez are back. <laughs> yes. This is it. This is it. We're going to do it. And let's see who we have in the Champions League final. Inter Milan. <gasps> oh, I don't believe it. Wait, I could have got the Inter Milan job. I can still get the Inter Milan job. So they've got Inter, Ginter, Gravalon, Skliniar, Brozovic, Hakimi, Nyingalan, Eriksen, Carrasco, Piatek, come on. Martinez. That's not a brilliant team either. We can do this. We can actually do this. Um, fix the problem myself. Um, so who's oh yeah, Mary's injured, so we're gonna have to use Benitez. But good news is Alvarez back, and so is Acuna. So that is brilliant news. Woof. There we go. So I I can't wait. I, I can't wait. This is basically the team we're running, right? For this final game of the season, second to last game of the season, I will be playing the City game. I may as well just, like, put it on Legendary and sit there and let them win. But, let's do it. Let's let's get this title win. Villa haven't won in their last three. Champions! We are champions of the Premier League. Five years. Uh, it's taken us five years to win the Premier League, but we have done it. Who is suspended and who cares? Alfonso Davies, whatever. But now we have City. And then that's it. And then that's it. I am so happy now. Oh, man. I am playing the next game, so I can actually risk some of our more injured players. So, see you guys. Well, actually, I'm going to end this recording here. I will add a clip in of us lifting the Premier League title. And then what I will do for you guys is I will go through the squad before the end of the season. See our progress. And then we will go into the Champions League final.
together as well. Really organised outfit led by a top class manager. Fully deserved winners. Premier League champions. Well, the fans are thrilled. They've been with them all the way. As the players will tell you, it's what they've done game after game, Alan. You've won leagues, it's a, a test of durability as well as excellence. Yeah, that's what makes it feel so satisfying. A test of your character, they've come through with flying colours. And the pyrotechnics, very suitable. Keeping the ball. This you've been wonderfully weighted pass. And a goal! The first of the contest. Well, it's always best to get your nose in front in the final. Really puts the pressure on the opposition. Wow, what a lovely goal. The finish had to come after this pass that split the defence in half. That move looked as though it had genuine potential, but it's broken down. Frankie de Jong. Now, counter-attacking possibilities here. Might be able to set up the chance. He's in behind the defence here. And it's gone in. Just what the doctor ordered. Things looking very... Looking to carve out a chance. Not messing around with that clearance. Brozovic. The ball with Martinez. Carrasco now. Ericsson, can he put it away? And a goal! Brozovic, a bit sloppy in possession. An awful lot of green space to run into. He's got to score! Oh, he's found the net! And that increases the advantage to two! just what they wanted and just what they deserve well here it is again it looks a simple goal yes well not so fast the referee says penalty and maybe a late glimmer of hope for them a goal it is a confidently taken penalty 3-2 it is who would have predicted that before a ball was kicked a real opening now it's opened up for him it's still alive. And the final...
So then guys, that is it for the Wigan Athletic rebuild. I've had so much fun doing this. I've been addicted to it. It's been so much fun, guys. So thank you. Um, obviously, thank you to Jared for the footage of the Champions League trophy lift because I lost mine. I didn't record it by accident. So um, I'm going to use Jared's footage. I know it's not great, but thank you. At least you get to see Wigan players lifting the trophy, including Julian Alvarez and Joe Gomez, who I didn't even know was were in his rebuild. Like, I watched it, but maybe that's why I felt so familiar with playing Inter in the final, because he played Inter in the final, and he won 1-0, and I won 3-2. I know, small world, right? But yeah, thank you guys for watching this Wigan rebuild. I can't wait to do more rebuilds in the future. So yeah, thank you for the ride. It's been a great one.